I'm Elena Wheel. I'm Design Manager for Bloomberg and Workplace Strategy Lead, and I'm so pleased to be joined today by Andrew Anagnas, President and CEO of Autodesk for his sponsor spotlight, The Future of Design and Make. Hi, Andrew. Hello, and welcome. nice to meet you. <laughs> Could you please tell us all a bit about what Autodesk does? Well, you know, Autodesk, coincidentally, we make software for people that make things. Uh, historically, people uh, know us for AutoCAD. However, you know, the company is really defined by being a 3D modeling company today. So the, the, the products that define the company are Revit, Fusion, Maya. These, these are where the majority of the innovation and actually usage is, are, is going on in our space. But we're actually moving beyond that into connecting the design and make processes in the cloud on platforms that support various industries. So we started off as a mechanical drafting and, yeah. and architectural drafting tool. Now we're moving into a world where we're connecting design and make processes in the cloud. Uh, we have leaders here with us today who design and make the world around us. What, what do you see as the challenges that uh, their companies and the industries that Autodesk supports are facing both now and into the future? You know, we have a kind of a unique view on this because we're up above what people are doing, so we see the whole ecosystem. I think, I think I'd like to go back in the way back machine for a minute to, to talk about this. Go way back to the, the calm, easygoing days, the halcyon days, so to speak, you know, 2019. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, back then when I talked to customers, you know, the, the conversations were about talent, you know, and, and hiring and recruiting talent. It was a lot about connecting data between various files. You know, people always talk about cost management. And the conversation about bringing new processes to the cloud, connecting people differently, it was kind of a push from the software side. Uh, and then all of a sudden, the world shut down. And for all of us, frankly, Autodesk included, things that seemed distant suddenly became very imminent. And the, the things that changed primarily for our customers and for all of us is the war for talent changed dramatically. People, Everybody saw a shortage and a constraint of talent coming down the pipeline. But now, people have exited the workforce. The, the level of technical acumen required in almost all the disciplines that our customers work in, construction, architecture, mechanical design, manufacturing, it's gone up. So people are struggling to find the right people for the right job and also trying to work with them in highly distributed environments. So that's like a big, that's like front and center for a lot of people. People still talk about cost right now today. So if you look at uh, the report that was recently published, people talk about cost. However, I think that's kind of in the moment, right? Because people are feeling these inflationary pressures right now. I think people need to be talking more about connectivity and throughput and capacity in the future. Because I think all of you know, this industry of designing and making things has a massive capacity problem. There are more things that need to be made, there are more things that need to be created than there are people, money, or material to do. We, we really have a capacity problem and it's a highly disconnected ecosystem. And the other thing is that comes front and center to people now is resiliency, being able to respond. I'll tell you, three years ago, four years ago, if I sat with a manufacturing customer, I had no conversation about supply chain diversity or, or kind of creating different pipes in different ways. It was all about just-in-time manufacturing with a small set of cheapest possible supply chain partners. Now everybody's talking about, I need to have a resilient supply chain management, everybody, construction industry, doesn't matter, and I need to have it multipolar, coming from multiple sources so that if one fails, I can pick up in a different direction. These conversations have changed, and also, instead of a push on the cloud and technologies, now it's like, hey, Autodesk, what are you doing? You know, uh, where's this? Where's that? It's, it's become, it's a total flip. It's a pull. So I, I, think, I think people are going to see these challenges around people, technology, and processes moving forward accelerating. More and more, these processes have to get connected. They have to get tightly integrated because the pressures on all of you from your customers are just going to continue to increase. I've heard you talk a lot about the importance of connecting exactly the digital and physical processes. Why is that important and how is technology from companies like Autodesk making that happen? Yeah, so first off, you know, the, the biggest loss in all of your processes, I, I, and you, know, you can all tell me later if you don't agree with me, though I, I've been around a long time and I 
think I see a lot of these things, is, is just the handoff between the various stages of the, of the process, the reinterpretation, the redo. Uh, just look at the AEC ecosystem. Nobody wants to touch the other person's model. So what happens? What, 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 what happens as a result? People create three, four different models for the same project. And the models don't talk to each other. They don't collaborate well. The owner, the person who actually is paying the money, has no single, I mean, I, all due respect to the Fosters, uh, speaker earlier, and uh, who, where is he? Is he still here? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. You know, handing that digital twin to the customer right now is kind of a fiction with regards to the as built, it, unless you are in absolute, utter, total control of the entire process. All right. And I don't think all of you appreciate how much, maybe you do, how much time and energy is wasted on the fact that you are not all working on one thing. So connecting these processes means that you're all engaged in one thing all the time, and you know who's doing what at every step in the process, who's responsible for what, who's, who's adding, who's taking away. You can have your own sandboxes, but they all have to merge together dynamically. Because right now, a lot of mistakes, a lot of waste, and a lot of redo goes on in the processes. And all the beautiful work that an architect or an engineer might do to create a more sustainable project gets thrown away in the construction execution with substitutions. It gets thrown away in the manufacturing with, with different processes. These things have to get connected in the future if we're going to realize the kind of hyper throughput ecosystem that we want. What, what about artificial intelligence seems to be uh, advancing with increasing speed? Uh, there's, you know, we're hearing about new applications of AI uh, coming up all the time. Um, what uh, impact will AI have on industry professionals? It's going to put everybody out of work. <laughs> <laughs> everybody. There, 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 won't be, there won't be any jobs for anybody. Uh, look, I, so one of the things I really love about ChatGPT is it allows us to have a nuanced discussion. Because for a long time, we were... We've been talking about AI at Autodesk. We do little AI and big AI inside of Autodesk. And we've been telling people about this notion of, no, you're going to collaborate with the system to get your problems done. The, the, the system will be just another collaborator on the team. And if there's something you can see about ChatGPT, the way it's being used by people, it's being used for first drafts to cheat on homework, OK? Um, <laughs> It's, it's, but it's being used to prompt or stimulate or create initial ideas. It's not omnipotent. It makes lots of mistakes. It's only as good as the data that has been put into it and has, how that data has been encoded, by the way. Has everybody heard of this concept of hallucinations, machine hallucinations? This is a very real concept because all of you, you are all capable of daily hallucinations. Have you, ever, have you ever looked at all those things about tricking your eyes? You know, the, the, like Twitter, they're always getting a picture about how it tricks your eyes. Do you see this? Do you not see that? That's because your brain encodes information for your eyes in the most simple way so that you can make quick probabilistic approximations. That's how AI works. You encode the data wrong, it hallucinates and gives you odd answers or doesn't see things. It's going to be a while before the technology is so smart and so capable that it starts to become some kind of existential threat to everything. And in our space, the world of designing and making things, it's going to be even longer. So here's what's really going to happen with AI. And here's what we're working on and the kind of things we're doing. AI is going to be a collaborative tool. It is going to remove a lot of, I would say, non-value added work. You want a 3D model so that you can test the idea, build it before it's built, manufacture it and play with it before you use it, but you really don't want to make it. That is not a value-added process to your creative process. If the machine on a prompt creates an initial 3D model for you and continues to refine the 3D model over time, that leaves you more time to problem solve, to collaborate, to iterate, and that is more likely the future. Now, does that mean there are going to be fewer people per project? It absolutely means that, OK? There will be fewer people required to execute a project. However, we are living in a world right now where we cannot execute enough projects. So if we can drive down the cost of an individual project, drive the number of people down per project, what happens? 
more projects get through the pipe. And that's really the more realistic world we're heading to. More projects through a pipe that has a lot more productivity associated with it because a lot of the intensive labor that goes into making something buildable, manufacturer, manufacturable, is actually taken over by the collaborative assistant that becomes the computer. That is the more likely world we're heading to. Fewer jobs per project, but more projects, and likely more types, more people employed in the ecosystem because there's more throughput. And I, I, I am an optimistic about this whole, whole in there. I know there is such a thing as bad AI. There are going to be uh, professions that are completely wiped out by AI. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it's not going to be the act of designing and making things, though. All of this um, digital transformation and its acceleration, there's no doubt it's impacting the workforce. Mm -hmm. What advice uh, do you have for, for leaders to attract, train, and retain talent? So if you're in school today, what are you hearing? You know, you're studying, you're studying architecture, you're studying engineering, you're studying construction management, you're studying silver engineering. What, what are you hearing today? You're hearing technology is changing everything. You're, you're hearing that AI is going to change the way processes work. You're, you're hearing that you're going to have to be more adaptive in your, in your career, that things are going to be more multidisciplinary. These things are being fed into the educational system, even at the tippy top of the educational system and even in the, in the middle of the educational system. So what do you want as you head out into the workforce? You want to see a company that is ahead on the technology curve, that embraces multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary work, that has a path that allows you to kind of experience different things so that you can work with these new technologies to achieve things, you're not going to want to work for the company that's stuck in the past. So the companies that are further along in the digital maturity curve, by the way, we see this in software as well, right? It's the software world's changing. Do you think AI isn't going to reduce the number of pro programmers per, per scrum team? It's absolutely going to reduce the number of programmers per Scrum team. And what, who, do, who, do the, who do the software developers want to work for? They want to work for the most advanced companies that are looking at these technologies. So you have to start thinking about your digital infrastructure in new and different ways because they're also going to be a recruitment tool. It's not just going to be how you get things done. It's going to be how people address or grade you in terms of some place they want to work. Amazing. I mean, thank you, Andrew, so much. Uh, that was a great conversation. Thank you for joining me. Uh, as an architect, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you tonight. I uh, really enjoyed it. And yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you.